Good morning, Trader First Year. This is the 315 2021 morning forecast. Markets are implying a move of 1.35% up or down on the S&P 500. Markets have realized a move of 1.09% up or down. The difference between what market makers are implying and what has been realized has tightened. The spread decreased to 387 basis points. The put call gamma imbalance is skewed to short dated calls on dip buying. However, a tightening spread decreases left tail risk and the potential for delayed upside spikes in realized volatility. Realized volatility has increased recently above 17. Bond market volatility is spilling over into other asset classes. This is favorable for wider and larger moves up or down on the index. However, economic growth upgrades and rising inflation expectations without rising inflation or economic growth are pushing up real yields, which is creating equity long duration valuation conflicts and raising discount rates. The S&P is expected to move close to 1.72% up or down this week, which means the S&P could rise 11% to 13% above its 200 day moving average, which is 3,494 spot 41. The S&P bounced last week off its 50 day moving average, which is 3,840 spot 70. Full year S&P earnings are expected to total 174 per share. At current prices, this puts the S&P at 22 times earnings, which equates to an earnings yield of 4.5% and an inflation adjusted real earnings yield of 2.5%. Forecasters are rushing to upgrade nominal and real growth expectations for the full year in 2021. For the first quarter of 2021, current estimates of nominal growth are 300 billion and real economic output of 130 billion. Full year economic output estimates have increased following the passage of stimulus. The median forecast for anticipating was anticipating close to $1.2 trillion in nominal growth and $800 billion in real economic output for 2021. Major fiscal stimulus is positioning the U.S. to capture more than one-third of global economic output in 2021. Economists continue to place the highest expectations for growth in the second quarter of 2021. Investment-making professionals are forecasting nominal growth of $400 billion and real output of $240 billion for the second quarter. This is a substantial amount of spending on goods and services, which may fail to materialize if there are any delays in COVID vaccination or rollouts. Under these assumptions, we would need 50 to $60 billion of spending on personal consumption expenditure in the months of April, May, and June. I think these estimates are optimistic and I continue to rely on more conservative estimates. I think we could see nominal growth in the second quarter of 325 billion to 350 billion. Real output is likely to be between 180 billion to 210 billion. There is strong possibility the $1,400 stimulus checks increase consumption similar to economic data in January of 2021, which recorded a $257 billion increase in personal consumption expenditure. It is also equal, equally likely to engender significantly higher personal savings rates. We may temporarily eclipse the 20% savings rate experienced early in 2020. I may upgrade my forecast following additional data releases. The February non-farm payroll report was strong and robust. However, the trend has been weak non-farm payroll growth and elevated numbers of Americans re receiving some form of unemployment assistance, which indicates large swaths of slack in the labor market. Private forecast is anticipating payroll growth between 270,000 and 500,000 per month, which equates to 3.2 million and 6 million additions to full year payrolls. This key economic indicator is likely to pressure growth in the first half of 2021. However, the recent agreement on $1.9 trillion in deficit spending is significant tailwind to nominal growth in the second half of 2021 and the first half of 2022. This assumes virus cases come down, but substantially by April, May, and pandemic flare-ups lessen. Government stimulus checks total $380 billion, which represent a little less than one-fifth or 20% of the total bill. States and local governments will receive much-needed stimulus totaling $350 billion. This has, this has led some market observers to anticipate economic overheating, which is favorable for upside risk and inflation. I believe these fears are statistically unfounded. The recent increase in nominal treasury yields and five-year break-evens on TIPS, which are treasury inflation protected securities, towards 2.51% is transitory and likely reflecting recent increases in energy prices and base effects. Following the passage of stimulus, uh, larger fiscal dissaving increases capital inflows to finance very large twin deficits, which should put upward pressure on the U.S. dollar and downward pressure on corporate and government bond yields. Potentially weaker inflation data than consensus estimates should allow real yields to remain negative. Dollar appreciation dampens import commodity-driven inflation and should lessen temporary transitory base effects. Inflationistas and inflation fear mongers engaging in scare tactics are likely to be proven wrong. However, 
inflation base effects are expected to be to lead to short-term transitory spikes in headline inflation data from March, April, and May. The impact on core PCE is expected to be limited. Market expectations are split, but I expect the Federal Reserve will see will look through these spikes. Political risk have diminished in the first quarter due to reconciliation, but it has increased in the second half of 2021 and the first half of 2022, which may pose risk to much needed investment spending on infrastructure, human capital, and research and development. So I view it in the medium term as tilted to the upside due to potential gridlock. However, there is a possibility for another round of reconciliation in 2022 budget combined with the removal of the filibuster rules in the Senate. This could pave the way for easier passage of additional investment led spending, which is much needed to raise the U.S. long term potential growth rate. Although due to political isolation, this also increases the potential for lone wolf domestic terrorism. Vaccine distributions priced into Q3 2021, but distribution obstacles have increased and efficacy for herd immunity will be closely watched. Redefining herd immunity may become the norm. So instead of a fully vaccinated population of 90%, we may accept a different goalpost for full vaccination, perhaps it drops between 70% to 75%. Details are currently unknown. The market is currently pricing in an additional 1.72% move up or down by March 19th. This is a quadruple witching week. The S&P 500 could potentially trade as high as 4,008 spot 60 and as low as 3,874 spot, tw- spot 20 by March 19th. The VIX is expected to move 7.02 points or percent. The VIX is currently trading at 2151. The VIX price range is 23.02 to 20.09. The SKU index is extremely elevated, which indicates market participants are paying up for catastrophic protection, which are two sigma events. Stocks continue to offer investors the highest real returns. The nominal yield on equities is 4.5%, while the nominal yield on 10-year treasuries is 1.6%. Real yields on all tenors of government bonds at the shorter end and belly of the curve are decisively negative, but real yields at the longer tenors above 20 years have moved into positive territory. Real yields on U.S. equities remain strongly positive. Disclaimer, with realized volatility rising above 12, there is larger risk of systematic, highly leveraged short vol strategies like equity vol targeting, trend following, and risk parity positioned for a sell-off and reduction in market exposure. The potential for a much larger delayed sell-off of 4 to 5% is coming. The March-April VIX contracts at 21 and 25 are fairly priced. Passage of fiscal stimulus should juice the start of a new long-term economic cycle, which favors a continued fall in realized volatility. I am temporarily moving against a larger rise in implied or realized volatility. However, I have been wrong before, but sell-offs will give investors great opportunities to buy the dip. Traders should focus on cyclical sectors, which tend to outperform at the start of a new economic cycle. For example, being long financials, industrials, metals, mining, oil and gas, consumer discretionary, and technology. Thanks for listening.